Okay, thank you. Welcome to this talk. Um, I will share with you my my little uh, expertise regarding a project I did to to let's say control my my house, my home. It's a project started long ago, and finally reached OpenBSD. This is via this project that I uh, I uh, meet the the OpenBSD, and I will explain all my project. Um, so first of all, my name, Vincent Delft. You see my blog website, my company website, and if you want to reach me, you have my email. So I will explain um, which component I've used to monitor my home. The lessons learned since 1988, so it's quite a long time. And uh, the problem I had with Linux, because I've started with Linux, and why I choose OpenBSD. And then the, the, the next topics are um, quite recent. Um, if we have time, I will go through them. So first of all, the components and the objective. So it's to monitor my, my home, my house. And I'm using infrared captors in different rooms. Uh, I have the concept of zone, so you can activate a zone and deactivate a zone, like, for example, the garage. If you have animals, put them in the garage and you activate the rest of the, of the home. Um, I would like to have a system which send SMS and also receive SMS. So I can um, activate, deactivate zones by sending SMS from my, from my mobile. And I received uh, events on my, on my GSM too. Um, I have sirens. Uh, I have a small web interface when I can look at the, the log files, f some details regarding the different events. And I have uh, webcams. So I would like also to see from, from, my, from any device what's going on around the house. And for sure, I have also uh, an objective to have a, a cheap solution. Um, budget is not, is not unlimited. So let me uh, share with you the outcome, and then I will uh, explain how I came to this outcome. So first of all, OpenBZ for me, for this project, was the best system um, amongst the different I've tested. Very flexible. Uh, it runs on, on very different kind of hardware. Um, I've implement implemented recently a read-only uh, file system, which is really great. I will explain how I did that and why I, d I did that. The man page, very uh, complete, awesome. Uh, big thanks to the OpenBSD developers. It helped a lot um, having a feature, but explain how to use the feature is really great. Um, the, the upgrade system, so every two years you have a new release. You have a, a very uh, simple uh, system to, to upgrade your, your machine. We have also the syspatch, which allow to keep your machine safe and up to date in terms of security. This upgrade is very, is very um, straightforward and first time right. Y you really can apply, it, it runs. Never, I never had any issue with that. It takes a little bit time, but it's mainly because of my internet connection. It's not linked with the process itself. Uh, I've talked about this patch, and I, I, I hear and I read some remarks regarding BSD is dying. It's no more an option for today. Don't listen to those guys. Try open BSD yourself. Make your own uh, evaluation of the system. It's, it's really a, a, great, a great system, a great operating system. And at the end, I keep it. It's for me, from, from my point of view, the best system for, for this project to monitor my house. So if I go a little bit into uh, the details, uh, at the beginning I was using this, this card. It's uh, a card from a company called Velman. It's no more uh, produced. Uh, it was in 1998. Uh, basically, uh, I have uh, 16 I.O. ports. Uh, so 
on and off and uh, I connect this card to my system via a parallel <coughs> port. Then I have um, a small GSM device to send and receive the SMS. I have a, a, small, a small board. Um, I currently I'm using uh, an Atom board. It's just because of uh, power consumption. It's cheap and a low power consumption, so it's, it's perfect for this kind of usage. Four gigabytes of RAM is far enough, a small CPU. And <coughs> I'm not using disk for the moment. I will explain why. I'm using a small axis camera. I've bought them uh, on eBay. They are cheap and they are working quite, uh, quite uh, nicely. And for sure, uh, um, a reliable operating system to make this uh, system running 24 hour a day, 35, uh, 30, 165 days per year. So you have to have something which is reliable. On the software side, um, I was forced to use the, the, I, the I386 uh, systems until OpenBSD 6.0. I will explain why I've changed. Um, I'm using an HTTPD server for the, the, the web, the log, the, 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 the log file I'm presenting via a web interface, also to display the, the image of the camera. The camera is, uh, as uh, the, the axis camera has a motion detector, so it sends a picture when there is something changing in this uh, area, and send those pictures on an FTP, the daemon that runs on the on the operating system. I need a C compiler and I have a bunch of Python script I will explain. So <coughs> uh, basically um, I've developed on the Velman board a C program to loop around the in, in bay and out bay <coughs> API and to look at those IO if they are uh, open or closed. Um, this was uh, easy to, to develop, uh, very, uh, very simple to, to build, and in fact it's a, it's a big loop which look at all those I.O. and, and ch check their status and read them or set them if you want, for example, activate a sirens. This was nice, but there is a, a, a but, and I will explain a little bit later why, why I put the but here. There is also another package um, which um, allow you to manage the SMS. On OpenBSD you just have to, to type package at SMS tools 3 and you have all what you need. <coughs> there is a configuration file. Um, you just have few parameters to, to update. The device on which your SMS um, device is connected to so the serial port um, if you want to do incoming the, the CS convert is for the character set then the initial command the AT plus CHUP is just to hang up on a current connection if they are and then you have to develop a small event handler so a small script which will uh, be triggered when the system received an SMS I will explain that a little bit. So this small program received two uh, parameters. The received, saying that you have received an SMS, and the part where the SMS resides. An example of SMS is this one. So you have a lot of information coming from your providers. And the most important is the last, the last element. So you have the length of the text, blank line, and then the, the, the texts you have received. In this case, I received an SMS with the, the word status. If you want to send an SMS, you just have to, to put a file uh, in this directory, whatever the name. You can choose the name of the file. Just put the file there. It will be taken by the, the SMS daemon. You have to respect this template. At least you, you can uh, have more elements, but you have to at least respect this. So the destination, which ZSM device you would like to uh, reach, a blank line, and then the text. And 
you have to limit to the 120 character, I think. Um, for the web server, uh, at the beginning I was using a, a small program called FAPWS, which is a Python, um, a kind of Python library, uh, which allow me to easily display some elements. I'm now using the HTTPD uh, provided by OpenBSD. It's, uh, it's light. One of the key elements all in all this project is to have something which is light because the board is quite small. But HTTPD is perfect for this. And um, I'm, running, I'm running it in a shrewd environment, so even if someone uh, finds my machine, he, he cannot uh, break it. Um, this interface does not allow you, for me, to configure the alarm. So security-wise, it, voilà, it's not possible via, via this uh, HTTPD to, to, to break the system. Um, if your provider uh, <coughs> does not allow you to have a fixed IP address, you have to, to make a solution uh, with dynamic DNS, like, for example, free DNS. You have to install a small uh, script, for example, every five minutes, which will update the free DNS website concerning your IP address, so you can always reach your uh, web interface. Oops. <laughs> so for, for the camera, it's just a, a normal situation. You just have to configure the, the camera that they send a picture to your FTP server. So you just have to provide the IP address. You just have to um, also provide the user ID uh, that the, the, the camera can use to, to put those files on your uh, OpenBSD machine. So a couple of commands. Uh, like I've presented there. You can have multiple cameras. I have two cameras, but you can have uh, as many as you want. So my lessons learned since 1988. Um, the time I spent before each upgrade is, is should not be underestimated. In fact, it's one of the one of the biggest uh, pain in this system, um, you always have a package which, which upgrade and, and break your, your system, a library which change um, its position, uh, it's, no more, it's no more in the same place. Um, I had uh, a, a few problems with the board uh, after six, seven years, so such kind of cheap machine running 24 a day, a full year, voila, it's not perfect, it's not ideal, so um, be prepared to replace the board every six, seven years. Um, the weakness part in this system is the power supply, so the, the small device will transform your, your uh, current in, in five volt, three volt, something like that. This element is very, very weak, maybe because the, the boards are cheap. And um, this weakness is most probably uh, the consequence of the other, other, other element. Um, I don't know, maybe it's specific to me, but I had, and I still have a lot of power cut, um, a storm, a technician on the streets um, doing stuff, and they interrupt the, the, the power for a few seconds, one minute, but it's enough to um, to kill the machine, except you have an UPS. Uh, I had an UPS in the beginning, but uh, I removed it. So every small power cut killed the machine, and then the machine reboots immediately when the power back, and maybe this affects the power supply. Every two years, I have to replace the power supply. Um, then you have also the infrared captors. It's a... Uh, um, also um, um, an element to, to, to look at carefully because you have to clean them at least one year of, yes, once, once a year you have to, to, to perform a, a good cleaning. And in the big loop I've explained to, to capture the I.O. of the different captors, 
you have to be smart enough and take into account the false alarm. This is a quite difficult element because you have maybe animals which uh, trigger uh, a captor and you don't want to uh, generate uh, an alarm uh, and activate the sirens. Uh, maybe you have some small insects. Um, also, if your, cam uh, if your uh, captor is pointing to a radiator, the fact that the, radi the radiator starts, it could also uh, trigger uh, the captor and, and generate false alarm. So the loop must be clever enough to uh, avoid such kind of, of alarms. In the beginning, my neighbors wa were uh, <laughs> quite annoyed by the sirens, which uh, start in the middle of the night and when always when I was in, in on holidays, so <laughs> quite difficult. So this is why do not forget to have the possibility to manage your system from remote. Uh, having SSH, it's 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 the best option. Um, via a smartphone, you have application you can you can connect to your machine and, and you can manage it from directly from from the mobile. Or via SMS, you can uh, send S SMS command to restart the process, to reboot the machine, to whatever you want. Uh, generate, uh, exclude a zone, for example, from, from the monitoring. And also uh, an observation, it's not, uh, it's not always a good idea to use old machine for such kind of system. Um, old machine will use old technology which consume a little bit more power than the new one. So if you want to keep your electricity bill low, it's better to, um, to buy new boards like, like the Atom, for example, um, which is optimized in terms of uh, power consumption. Um, so my story is this one. At the beginning, I started with Slackware for about four years, so as from 1988. At that time, I was playing with such kind of device. It was a pain to install Linux, about 20 disks to install the Linux system. But it was working quite well, quite reliable, um, and upgrade, upgrade at that time, upgrade of Slackware wa was a little bit difficult uh, and required a lot, lot of effort. So I migrate to Red Hat. I keep <laughs> it about three years. Um, but then I had also some difficulties with the package and the RPM package, which uh, generate some, uh, some situation where I, I, I'm forced to update my, my programs. The libra library moved from, from one place to another one. It was not... Uh, it was not perfect. So it, it is in the time of 2000, huh? so maybe they have found solution today. And then I've used Gen2, which was uh, for me one of the best uh, system. So um, quite reliable, um, upgrade not so difficult, quite predictable. Um, the biggest problem was that you have to build from source. and. Um, this board was the only one with uh, the i386. So uh, when you have to upgrade, it takes one day. But it runs. It runs quite, quite nicely. Um, I also observed that uh, during uh, this about 10 years, I had uh, two disk crash two times. Um, I don't know. I've never understood why. Maybe the, um, the manufacturer of the disk is not good enough at that time. <coughs> I don't know. It's just an observation. Then in 2009, there is a small gap of two years, if, if you look carefully. But in 2009, I've tried the OpenBSD. Um, it was quite easy to install. Um, the upgrades are fantastic, um, really easy. Um, all the features, there is no so much uh, um, 
variation within the system. Uh, when you have a feature, it stays more or less always. It stays as it is, small uh, uh, upgrades, small uh, add-ons uh, in terms of feature, but the main aspect remains. So for such kind of project, this is really, really great. Um, OpenBSD is secure by default. And as I said, the manage page is very, very useful. So it was kind of an ideal situation. But in 2013, I see in the, um, I see in the mailing list that uh, it was said that the IOPERM in B, out B, I was using, was um, not foreseen to be uh, implemented on the 64-bit system. So I uh, I'm say, OK, I have to, to continue with the 32-bit. Um, but then in 2016, they decided to remove that also. So uh, OpenBSD 6.0 was uh, a decision for me to move away from this old board and to buy a new one. So um, since I do not have anymore the possibility to interact with my board via this this API in B out B, um, I was forced to buy a new one. Uh, I bought this from a vendor called Denkovi. It's a very small board. If you look at the size of the of the internet port, it's very small, and I have 24 I/O on, on this system. It's not it, the cost is quite uh, acceptable, um, and I've uh, used this system. Uh, but not directly. So I'm using what we call optocoupler. It's a small device which allows you to connect uh, a system like a, a sirens, like a, a infrared captors. Um, and if you have an electrical problem on this device, it will not break the board. It will break the optocoupler. So it, it is it's a kind of protection, electrical protection for, for the board. Um, so I've built a new a new loop uh, I did it in Python to um, look at all those <coughs> do all those ports all those IOs via SNM, SNMP get command and you can you can interact with the board via SNMP set command so it's quite really uh, really simple to implement the same logic to avoid the false alarm so um, quite simple. The SMS tools is the same, FTP daemon is the same, HTTP daemon is the same. So really, one, one component of the solution uh, was uh, rebuilt. And now, um, to tackle the system, the, the problematic regarding uh, the power cut and the possibility that when the machine boots uh, automatically, when the, when the power uh, is back, is that you have a file system check. And in some cases, this file system check asks you question, which is uh, a problem for such kind of, of machines. Um, the only possibility is to have a, a direct connection to the machine to answer the question. <laughs> so my idea was to, um, to, remove, to remove the write option on the disk. So build a, s a system read only. There is a, a very good project called Flash RD, which uh, tackle this problematic. But um, instead of using Flash RD, I've built it myself. And <coughs> to build, okay, to build such kind of system with OpenBSD is quite simple, in fact. Um, what I did, I, I did a normal installation. So you start your BSD RD, so the, 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 the process which allow you to install OpenBSD. I plugged in an USB uh, stick, and I, I asked OpenBSD to install everything on this USB drive under the same folder, under the same file system. So everything is installed under slash. Uh, so I skipped the, the, the recommendation, the default provided by OpenBSD. 
Then once uh, the installation is performed, I boot from this USB drive and I change the FS tab like this. I don't know why the color. So what, what I change, I change the parameter which says that this file system is read only. The, the rest remain the same. And I had three lines for var slash var slash def slash tmp. So there will be um, there will be a memory file system, so MFS. Um, I provide a link to a folder where the system can find the different uh, files. And I uh, allocate a certain amount of memory for this file system. So the file system will become read-write, but in memory. There is no link with your, with your disk. So then you have to um, provide information in those two folders. So just copy what you have in slash var in, into, the, into the new folder. Uh, the same for def and for tmp, uh, I don't need files. So um, it means that when the machine will boot, um, those slash var and slash def will be seen by the, by the kernel as normal file system but they are in memory with the information you can find is uh, cfg slash var. So very simple to set up. Uh, the only um, recommendation I have is just to have at least fa four gigabytes of RAM for, for, uh, for this. Um, I'm able to boot from USB 2 port on a lot of different ports, board. Um, I don't know why for USB 3 um, it doesn't boot. M maybe it's my fault. I, I don't know why uh, OpenBSD is, is not booting from, from those USB. I have to check that. Um, <coughs> so there are few elements to take into account. Uh, if you want to make uh, some changes on your system, you have to um, put back the system read-write via the mount command, then you do your change, and then you put back in read-only via a mount minus <coughs> UR. Um, if you would like to add some uh, files, for example, via the pkg add command, then you have to update your slash cfg folder. I'm doing it via Ersing, you can do what you want. And if you want, if you want to keep your log files, maybe you have to execute this command one once every hour, if you want, every day. Um, for my for my home uh, for for this project, I'm just doing a sync every day. And for the rest, OpenBSD see, sees the different folders uh, exactly like uh, like a normal OpenBSD system. So it's, it's quite uh, easy. And via this system, you can really shut down the machine. You can kill it. You can pr uh, plug out the, the, the power cable. The machine will go down. You plugged in. If you have confi configured the BIOS, it will <coughs> boot up immediately. Uh, no file system check, n nothing. It just boots uh, normally. So for me, it's really uh, the perfect situation. And for sure, I have uh, a disk attached to, to the board where I put the, the picture from the camera. And for this system, OK, I could have issues uh, when the machine boots. I could have file system uh, issues. But OK, it's just the picture from the camera. Um, I prefer to have that damage. Uh, and the, and the, the, the my house is still uh, monitored and controlled. <coughs> um, and I'm using this system since uh, about three years um, without any um, problem anymore. An observation, since uh, 2009, I'm using OpenBSD. Um, so I never had a, a disk crash. Why? No idea. Maybe the, the manufacturer are, are doing better disk now. 
maybe it's coming from OpenBSD, uh, no ID. It's just an observation. And the future ID is to have some uh, power over Ethernet uh, devices. So my different camera will have just one cables. Uh, today they have two, one for the power, one for the network. So this will facilitate the, 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 the possibilities and the, and the setup of the camera. So, voila, this is the conclusion. This is the same slide I, I showed before. So for me, OpenBSD is by far the, the best system uh, for this project. It's really simple, light. It can run on many different boards. Uh, easy to tune, easy to adapt, easy to upgrade, which was uh, one of the pain. And um, it's secure by default. So uh, for such kind of project, this is really a, a good feature. Um, voila, and that's it. So if you have questions. <laughs> yes? Uh, two questions. One, uh, had you heard of OpenBSD before you tried it, like when you were doing Red Hat and stuff like that? Um, had you heard about, did you know about OpenBSD then? Um, um, before. Just repeat the question before. Ah, okay. The, the on the okay, so the question is, uh, did I heard about OpenBSD before this project? Um, yes, I heard obo about OpenBSD. I was aware. Uh, it, it's a system existing since long, long ago, but I never tried it before. So this, was, this project was a trigger for me to, to, to have a look at OpenBSD. And um, when I tried to configure and to set up it for, for this, I was amazed how simple it is. So now I'm using OpenBSD for a NAS, uh, for uh, laptops at home. All machines are OpenBSD. My kids are using OpenBSD. Um, <laughs> It's just my wife, we stay with Linux, but all the rest are. <laughs> <laughs> and the second question? You answered it. I was, I was going to ask how did you, uh, what made you try? No, it's really, it's <coughs> honestly, if, if you want to make your own judgment, your own evaluation, try it. It's the best. The best thing you have to do, it's, it's quite simple. Just use an, an, an old machine and perform the standard installation. The standard installation will use the whole disk. So don't imagine to have dual boot at the beginning. You can, but it, it requires a, a little, little bit of configuration aspect. But if you want to keep it simple, dedicate a disk, do your installation. And then you have to the package add command. You can add what you want. It's very simple. Other question? Yes? I wanted to ask if your SNMP board um, also supports uh, track events instead of yes. calling it. Have yeah. you uh, investigated instead of uh, uh, evaluating the SNMP traps instead if you receive an event? Yes. So the SNMP trap exists. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Just. Uh, so the question is, does, uh, uh, am, I, am I using the SNMP trap feature on the, on the small uh, Denkovi board? Um, I've looked at it. Um, the problem is that uh, you receive different kind of message, more than what I expect. Uh, so you have to filter them. And I was not, I, I was a li little bit surprised that some event have a small delay. And uh, this is a problem for me. As I explained, I have to be uh, quite smart uh, to detect the false alarm. And the time is really a, a, a key element. For example, if I have an alarm on what captor, and let's say within ten, 10 seconds, another uh, another uh, event on, a, on another device, it means that someone is walking inside the house. This is not a false alarm. If I have one, one signal and then 15 seconds, for example, 
And another signal, it's something like a false alarm. So the timing is quite important. SNMP trap was not the, the best way to have such control on the timing. <coughs> so I prefer to pull them manually, <coughs> manually, within the loop. <coughs> Other question? Did I convince someone to, to give a try to open BSD? <laughs> it's a question? Yes, I'm not a developer, so yes, I can share it, but uh, I, I don't know. Yes, sorry, sorry, I repeat the question. Uh, does the, the, the code I did is available uh, somewhere? Uh, the answer is no. Um, maybe I could, but uh, I'm not a developer, so it's, it's not clean for sure but maybe someone else can uh, improve it. So yes, I could, I could do it. I don't know if there are other person interested in such kind of uh, project, no idea. But why not? I, I, couldn't I, I could think about that and maybe in the future I can push the, the code on, on, a, on a GitHub repository. CBS, surely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a developer, so I'm not using CVS. Do you still have, ha do you still have happy neighbors? <laughs> yes, they are much more happy now. The two, the two, three first year was a little bit difficult <laughs> with them. Now they are much uh, happy. Uh, Thank you. The logic is much better. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you.